one year ago, uh, no one, I think, could have predicted quite how much videos and video calling would take over our, our lives, but it looks like it's here to stay. Um, over here in North Wales, we are back to full lockdown as of Friday, and in any case, it looks like the paradigm has, has fully shifted. No one is going back to in-person meetings as the default anytime soon. Can you talk us through not only what you've done behind you to set the scene, but specifically why you have done that and what the psychology of play behind that is? What I care about is, does your audience feel confident in you? The message mm. is not happening in your head, it's happening in their head. I'm in your head right now. That's where I exist. We're not in the physical place together. Even if we were in the physical place together, you make up your idea about me, your judgment about me in your head. If your head is going, hey, Mark's really confident right now, you don't know that. That's a theory that you have. You're confident in me. You're confides. You are with trust in me. You trust me. So what is the information I need to give you to trigger you into being confident in me? That's, that's the kind of thing I do with clients to countermeasure. You can't stop the stress and pressure. You can't hide from it. You can't go, oh, don't think that. That's stupid. Don't be under stress and pressure right now. It's just a camera and hundreds or thousands of people or millions of people watching me. You can't do that. You can only countermeasure it with other behaviors. And so it's about setting up your environment so those behaviors that you now start to do as countermeasures tell the story that you want to tell or the environment that you've set up around you gives the right context for, the, for what you want to say. Because what people think what you say means is very much made up from the context in which you say it. So if we want to change the meaning for people, we don't need to change what we say. We just alter the context around it. And they believe we said something different from what we said. They believe it meant something different. So yeah. for example, uh, th this is a these are self-soothing gestures. When we start to put especially fingers or palms of hands onto the face and rub, uh, repetitively, um, or we start to move bits of our clothing, and that might become repetitive. That's called an adapter. So self-soothers and adapters, we might not care if somebody else is doing a self-soother or an adapter. But in a situation of you're speaking live to the nation against your opponent, it becomes really important if somebody suddenly starts doing a self-soother mm. or suddenly does a tongue out push gesture, for example. And we start to go, well, were they, was that the distaste gesture of they've heard something distasteful or they've said something distasteful? Or was that a self grooming gesture to say, hey, I'm, I'm getting ready to say something really good and I want you to see how good I look? Or I'm getting to say something a bit, you know, might not be quite true, but I want you to know. I look really good before I say that, and I want you to, want to distract your attention. Let me talk uh, a little bit about the environment uh, here. Mm. There are triggers in this environment to give you a attitude about me. What does that couch say to you for a start? What do the pillows say to you, which are kind of bright and they've got kind of a leafiness to it and a yellow in there? Uh, the blanket here, hopefully you're, you're getting a sense of comfort. The light on in the background is giving you a sense of illumination. Somebody lives here. There's somebody at home here. Let me just let me just turn that light out. Just notice the difference on this. Because the light doesn't need to be on. There's no reason for the light to be on right now. No reason at all. But do you notice the difference? Huge difference. You don't have yeah, the ambience is completely changed. So the signal of the illuminated, the single candle has been used in art for millennia to trigger people to go, there's something happening here. There's something happening in that person's head. That's what I'm doing with this. There's somebody, uh, you know, um, there's somebody at home, but the lights aren't on, is used as a signal for somebody's there, but they're not really thinking. Uh, the metaphor of light for being good and dark for being bad has been used for millennia. So I've got the light.
lights on. I've got a lot of light on. Because nobody leans in like this and gets so close unless they already know you quite well. So there's lots of opportunity with this modality to use the way the brain is set up in order to do really smart influence and persuasion with people. Thank you.